Hey everyone, I'm Jen Anderson with Love Leathers and today we're making a cowhide clutch with Tandy Leather. One thing I like to do is actually take a look at the front of the hide because that's gonna tell me what design I'm gonna get. So if I want more of like an ombre, I could cut it out from this top area. Um, same with the bottom. If I wanted more of like a darker hide, I'm kind of checking where the hide, where the hair lays. I could do more of a darker pattern. So I'm actually gonna go, I'm gonna shoot for this area right here. So once I figure that out, I am going to flip the hide over, put the pattern down and mark out where to cut it. Okay, all right, so once I have marked my pattern out, I'm actually gonna use my cutting board to as a measuring to line it up with my ruler. So I typically will try to line these little bottom edge up. bad boy. One thing I like to do is kind of fold up and see where I need to cut just a little bit of the excess off. I always, sometimes I like to leave a little bit extra just so I'm not cutting off too much. But I'm using my leather weld. And gluing too, it doesn't seem like that important, but if you don't glue this all down right, it'll bubble and then you won't get your edges, like won't be sealed down as much and um, you have to go back and redo it, so. I'll it on there. I really just try to spend time um, while it's gluing to kind of get it completely flat especially around the edges. So I don't have to re-glue anything, work out any bubbles, anything like that. That's it. this veg tan, all the excess off of it. I always use a ruler just so I make sure I don't go into my cowhide because we've already measured everything, so. And I'm gonna double check my edges. So I've got my little dubber and we're just gonna go right in. So I'm just being really vigilant and careful around the edges. I like to do those first. Um, it's really important to not put a ton of dye on these dabbers. Get it around the edges. Again, being just careful around the edges. And I'll probably do two coats of this to make sure it's good and saturated. I really like to just do straight, um, you know, strokes. Um, you can do circles if you want, but this is how I do it. I just like to make sure it's nice and saturated. 
So any spots that I see kind of already starting to dry and absorb, I try to go back over them because um, I know I need a little bit more dye. So, and the nice part about this is you can, you know, you can watch, you can watch how it starts to dry and soak in. Um, it's just important to try to get the most even layer that you can um, across the whole lining. That's it. So sometimes I will let it dry completely um, because then I can see if there are uneven spots or not. But this actually looks really good. I think it looks pretty even. So now I am applying Neat Lac. So Neat Lac is an amazing finish for this lining. So I'm using a little paper towel. I use a paper towel because I feel like I can control the amount a little bit better. A little goes a long way. So now I will be using this amazing product, one of my favorites, it's called Edge Flex, and I'll be edging the sides of the clutch. I typically do two coats, um, and sometimes up to three. It just kind of depends on the leather, how thick it is. You know, some cowhides are different, so some are thicker, some are thinner, so they absorb it a little bit differently. Um, but two layers is my, my goal. So I'm literally, this stuff dries pretty quickly too, so I'm already going back over my second coat. What you don't want is to, you kind of want to watch how it does dry too, because you don't want to really go over it when it's <clears throat> super wet. You don't want it to be tacky. It'll create like little bubbles. So that's it. That's the second coat. She done.
All right, so now I am cutting out the strap for the cowhide clutch and the little tab for the D-ring that will go on this. So just measuring out. I usually measure um, these at a half inch. So I'm just using my little cutting board to measure that. A half inch. Sure things good to go. This can be the most difficult part of it because it just, one, it takes measuring and you wanna make sure you're like lining everything up and matching, you know, the rivets to each side. So measurement is important. And then, you know, it's just a little, the more comfortable you get kind of doing this over and over again, just like teaches you to line things up, measure. And then you can kind of start to almost eyeball things. So I don't usually set them one by one because I want to check everything and check all my measurements before I set these. <laughs> and you know, then you don't have to go back and try to rip or rib it out. like backwards. I always go back, recheck them, um, and you know, make sure they're on there tight. So, so for the core clasp, um, I'm using the antique brass little guy. And one thing that I do is um, on the inside to mark where I'm going to be placing this. Is I kind of get it center as much as possible. Sometimes I look at the front, see where it's going to hit, but. And then I press really hard into the leather and I make my outline because that's going to tell me where I'm going to punch my holes. So once I have that done, I use my punch. pop this little guy in here just to see if I need any more room, and I do. I don't want to punch the hole too big, because that will not be good and this will slide around. So I'm going to kind of tuck this leather around the clasp so that it lays flat. All right, all right. 
it. <laughs> okay. Alrighty, so this little guy is done, so that's gonna help me set the other part. Mark this. So what I like to do is put it in there before I do anything. Kinda see where it hits. You can, I kinda like to make a little mark. Okay. I kind of know where. Stick this guy in here because this is going to not make it punch through. leather together.